Getting into a sticky, wet, grungy weather pattern here with the tropical moisture flowing north. And we'll take a look at the surface map and see how everything is laid out. There it is, Bear Clinic Low in the Fort Worth area with a cold front extending towards the west. This is a little different from the usual cold fronts we get in spring. Typically, we have a strong cold front that runs something like that with lots of blowing dust back behind it and the dry line shunted out to the east. That's not what we have this time around. We've got this vast area of continental tropical air, which means very likely the cool air is just going to spill southward and clear things out. And if those cold air pushes are kind of weak, that can leave a stationary front in place across Texas. In the eastern U.S., that warm air is definitely moving north. We can see 70s all the way up into Quebec. And they were in the icebox up to about two weeks ago. Lots of sub-freezing weather in that region. And they're starting to see spring proper. And then up to the north, yeah, we are seeing a warm-up in that region. Instead of below zero weather, we're starting to see teens and 20s. However, in Alaska, they've got that cold wave going on. And there it is. Lots of sub-zero weather, even during the afternoon hours. And Fairbanks, they're going to be right around minus 8 in that region right there. And gusty north winds at Anchorage with 14 degrees. And you can see that pressure gradient extending east-west. Well, here on the surface plots, we can really visualize all that cold air coming down. So obviously, there's a Canadian push to this air mass. And then we have the tropical air, of course, making it onto the Texas coast there and Louisiana also, where we have 70s dew points coming inland. So with a front out towards the west and moisture in East Texas and Louisiana, let's take a look at the composite map. So this is a rough idea of where the various severe weather parameters are coming together. And what we noticed here is that the best mid-level instability is going to be focused this evening on East Texas. And then the better, deeper moisture, that's going to be out north of Shreveport into southern Arkansas. The surface moisture axis located right here that's looking strictly at the surface dew points. So what this is telling us is that the better thermodynamics are located right in this region here, near Texarkana and just to the west. And this is going to be a cold pool driven MCS coming out of Oklahoma this evening. And you can see that the moisture, the instability, everything just kind of converges on that cold pool right in that area right there. So that's where we're expecting severe weather initially this evening. And then very likely it will spread southeastward along this moisture axis right here. However, the surface dew point moisture axis a little bit further to the west. So we could be looking at potential anywhere in between. And we do have kind of a weak thermal ridge aloft right here. And very likely that's going to form the western edge of most of the significant activity. And we can see that we're kind of in between two jets, the subtropical jet down to the south, the polar front jet up to the north, which is helping to initiate these storms. So they're going to lose a little bit of upper air support, but there will still be good anvil level storm relative shear to help ventilate those storms in Louisiana. And that's how things are looking at SPC. You can see they got that moderate risk starting back there in Texarkana and extending all the way into central Mississippi and further out to the west in the initiation area, which is going to be near Oklahoma City, slight to enhanced risk. And this is where we cheat a little bit and look at the model evolution. Now, those of you who watched this weathercast yesterday probably remember that we had the models developing one complex down here, another focused only up here, kind of either or. But what we actually got was a little bit of both. So the models 
really did not get it that accurately, and they were focusing mostly on this area rather than slightly up to the north towards College Station. I don't think it brought anything into College Station on any of those models. So that shows you the limitations even on the HRRR within six hours. It can still be an error. But we can kind of get an, a general idea of what might be coming as long as we're careful not to take things too literally. So let's see what it's shown here. That's the convection we have going on already in Arkansas. You can see one complex develops at 0Z, which is going to be evening, and another one around Dallas-Fort Worth. So that those are going to be the contributions of strong heating. Also, another complex gets going south of Oklahoma City near Paul's Valley up to Tulsa, and that's along the front itself. So quite a bit going on here initially. And we end up with a couple of complexes, one along Interstate 20, out towards Monroe, and the other focused along that front. Now, we know the atmosphere out here is favorable for thunderstorms, so those little complexes will bear watching. But I can already see, due to the convex shape on some of these elements, that this is kind of an outflow-ish situation. Let me back this up a little bit, and we'll look at the general environment. I clicked a skew T around Shreveport, and we can see that the decapes are elevated up near 1,000. Also, these storms are actually not very well ventilated. I guess you have to go all the way down towards Lake Charles to catch that 90 knot flow aloft, and there it is, that photograph tails out. I think we're going to have a tendency towards the storms being a little bit on the outflowish side. However, in this environment, especially up in far northwestern Louisiana, Texarkana area, there still is going to be sufficient 0 to 1 kilometer shear for some rotating storms. And the LCLs just a little bit maybe outside the ideal range. But if you go further north towards Arkansas, you get into some of the more humid air, and those LCLs drop down below 1 kilometer. So looking at our now cast, we've got the early elevated convection from about Tyler out towards Monroe in El Dorado, Arkansas. Then we have our new convection right here. That's going to be along that dry line feature. Maybe the north part is also a front up there, but I think most of this is the dry line. And we got that one cell going up. If we go over to the visible imagery, we'll get a better picture of it. Visible imagery, that's the best product to start with. And you can use that to find not only the character of the moist sector, but you can find early convection starting to go up here and there. Those elements are a little bit elevated, but here's some new convection that's likely going to get going. Anyway, these are destined to move eastward into the moist air. And we can see that this is a little bit further south than what the model was forecasting. So that could maybe extend the corridor of severe weather a bit into the Palestine, Crockett, Lufkin, Nakagdochus area. Further up to the north, well, that's where we find that surface cold front. We got storms already going up west of Oklahoma City all the way up towards Edmond and Guthrie, and even north of Tulsa there. So this is the actual... MCS itself that we're going to see later this evening, that's it coming together there in the Oklahoma City area. And that looks to be a little bit early based on the model initialization there. And quite possibly the atmosphere is a little bit less capped than what the model expects. It's even got towers all the way down towards Hobart and Altus. So let's grab a couple forecast QTs. We're going to grab one for Norman for the current time to see what the pre-storm environment looks like. There we go. Yeah, the atmosphere is weakly capped. A little bit of a cap there at about 650. That's kind of high. So we're probably, this is probably an ideal situation for turkey towers with that long scraggly area of steep lapse rates below the cap. And the atmosphere above that, not terribly cold either. Now, 
yeah, there's quite a bit of moisture all the way up to about eight or 9,000 feet, but it does taper off from 50s to 40s with height. So that's one issue there. However, shouldn't be too hard to clear that cap, especially with strong forcing like what we have with that cold front. But further to the south, let's get ahead of that complex there in Waco. This is really what the high resolution rapid refresh is useful for. So this is going to be the sounding for Waco. And we see a steeper lapse rate down there. Now that's pretty interesting. That's almost dry adiabatic there. And the moisture a little bit more shallow, but fairly rock solid from the surface up to 3,000 feet. Lots of mid and upper 60s dew points. And you can see those capes down there are kind of high as a result, about three to 4,000. The sea earth one kilometer shear, not as great, but obviously that improves as you go towards the east. So I'm going to be on standby in case we get a little tubular action out there from the clouds. We shall see. So with all this thunderstorm activity out there in East Texas, that's all elevated. I would expect there to be a little boundary maybe in place somewhere around there. And as this stuff grows, it could interact with that boundary. So I wouldn't be surprised to see, yeah, maybe some severe weather a little bit further south than the moderate risk. But yeah, the moderate risk, that is uh, definitely a concern. These are going to grow upscale and move southeast during the evening and into the Texarkana and Sulphur Springs, Mount Vernon, and Shreveport area around dark and into the nighttime hours. So that is your severe weather summary. Hope you enjoyed it. Now my job is to get this posted as quickly as possible. So anyway, I hope that encourages you to look at some of the same products that I looked at, especially if things start diverging from what I've presented and you start seeing some differences there. Jump into the data and try to figure things out. That's what makes forecasting interesting. Okay, I hope you all have a great weekend. Hopefully we'll see you all on Monday for the supporters. Everybody else, we'll see you on Tuesday. Take care. Bye-bye.